Yo, here's Andrew, and here's the next video. In this video, instead of just displaying a bunch of uh, compressed images, I'm actually doing some, um, I guess, real-time video processing. Well, it's not really processing. I'm just playing video, and the next step would be to actually do some kind of processing, but uh, here's my setup. So as you can see here, I'm using the, the Zyber board once again. Uh, you can ignore the microphone, it's actually not doing anything. But right now, I have the Zyber board connected to this uh, VGA display, the same one in my last video. And I know in the last video, I talked about using a, uh, basically using a surveillance camera. It's a, a TTL uh, JPEG camera. Unfortunately, I have to do some more work with that. In order to get video from that other camera in real time, I'll, I'll have to uh, build some kind of um, external module using a, uh, a chip that can actually take the, what is it called, the uh, NTSC, I believe, signal, and then uh, basically give me a digitized signal. So it was actually a lot easier just using a regular webcam. And once again, I'm using uh, Linux running on the Zinc chip, which actually makes this whole thing a lot easier, because what you can do is you can basically uh, set up the USB controller to act like a uh, act like a, a PHY uh, host device and then if you do that enable all the USB utilities in uh, the corresponding library and then also what you need to do afterward is you gotta like, configure the device tree but another important step is if you enable the I think it's called the U USB video class if you do that you can just use uh, OpenCV and right now I'm using the Microsoft webcam I think it's called the Microsoft HD 5000 webcam but since I'm using that video class, I believe you should be able to use other webcams too without having to do too much configurations. So, you know, here's a webcam. You know, as you can see, as I move around the webcam, I can see, you know, the, the, the real-time feed on the VGA changes and you can kind of see me. So, yep, there's, there's my uh, Cameo appearance. Uh, unfortunately, this thing does not run as fast as I like it, which which is almost a good thing, because then it'll force me to do things using that VGA fabric. But before, what I tried to do was just take the image and then uh, resize the image according to the width of the screen. But one, uh, the whole resize function in OpenCV takes a long time. I'm assuming it's a really uh, heavy process, because this, this entire real-time feed, just, this is not possible. It just slows down to an ant speed, and it just doesn't work. So uh, another way of making it run faster is like reduce the resolution of the camera. Right now I think it's uh, 640 by 840. It's like 640 by 8, 800 something I believe. I forgot the exact resolution, but it's one of those uh, typical resolutions, and it's made to be much smaller than the actual resolution of the video display, just because it just makes processing a lot easier. And. Uh, I mean, that's basically it. Uh, the main part of the code is just that. So I, I'm just using the regular OpenCV functions and it's running on uh, the Zypa hardware, which is really, really convenient. Really happy that I didn't have to do too much extra stuff to get the web camera to work. It's funny because getting the web camera to work was actually a lot easier than trying to use the, um, what's it called, the AXI DisplayPort in Linux. Like I said before, I had to basically take this download driver and like port it into uh, the Linux environment, which wasn't too bad, but this was actually a bit easier. The only tricky part was you gotta make sure you enable the right stuff using the pedal Linux config command. You have to enable the right driver, and then you have to make sure you make the right adjustments to the system tree. I'm very fortunate that there is a uh, there's a Xilinx like Wikipedia page which explains you exactly what you need to do to make the USB controller act like a uh, host USB controller. That's really critical for any of this to work. But uh, thanks to those who took the time to watch this video. In the next video, hoping to do something a bit more interesting. I'm actually hoping to uh, try, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this in the next video, but I want to do some kind of filtering using the fabric and have uh, the, what's it called, the GPIO switches uh, enable and disable those filters. It might just be your, your typical Sobol uh, or another uh, filter for edge detection. Something just to kind of demonstrate that, you know, you can use HLS, you can use uh, the Linux drivers, and it'll be a way of me just kind of wrapping everything together. But uh, like I said, thanks again for watching this video and stay tuned for next time.